fighting with them foes all the time But I gotta do it, they always stay out of line Sometimes I wanna just chill and laugh But I'm the protector of the emeralds and gems Stay knuckled up in a deep cut I'm seeing skulls that burn, they trying to throw me off Avoiding my luck, I'm feeling kinda stuck Don't call me nothing, give me a box a way to make a window in Windows always be up front. I'm gonna Google that. Oh yeah, monkey type beat. not listen to this though. Gotta get the tunes going first. Once I get the tunes going then I'm I'll be ready to rock. Ooh yes. Yes. What is this? What is this? I love this. Do you know where we're going? No. Yeah, this is the vibe. Honey, sometimes when you go it's to sleep, you go on a little vibe. walk. And sometimes you talk about a place called the Silent Hill. I don't remember. Well, that's okay, sweetie. That's why we're gonna go there. So you can remember. Yes! This is 
song is good. Right there. Yeah. Right there. That's perfect. So what I want to work on is I wanted to add a thing to the fence code to see if I could keep track of how many fence pieces are currently in a chain. I had an idea to do that while I was at work the other day. Bar. Um, are connected pieces. So we're going to keep an array of the pieces that get added in, but this part of the code is only ever going to be able to add the first two fences that get added to the array. In search, what we want to do is we want to say if Because this is the part of the code that's going to actually look through the whole um, linked list of fences. Oh no, I don't want to do it here. This is not the right part to do this at. I want to do it right here. If Recursive search, no, Jesus. If connected pieces dot has node, there. I was just moving that code into its own function for cleanliness sake. So now, print complete corral, and then I want to say pieces.size. Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. It's not. This is not very accurate. Let's see what happens if I comment this out. Because it shouldn't count the gate. One, well, it's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Now, whenever we want to 
uh, get size, we can just go CDFG, yeah. Funk get size, return connected pieces dot size. Yo! That's so weird that there's... Okay. So on my stream, or on my SoundCloud, the weekly curated podcast has this Welcome to Silent Hill thing. And just yesterday, I downloaded Silent Hill and started playing it. Was doing a lot of Google searching for Silent Hill, so that kind of creeps me out a little bit. That SoundCloud would have access to my browsing history and my searches, and immediately queue up Silent Hill right after I downloaded it. That's kind of—I don't like that. But at the same time, good tunes. So I don't know. Maybe it's worth it. Because I do like the music it's playing right now. Okay. So now we need to consult GitHub. And see what we need to work on. Building should require resources. Um, I think I need to do some debugging also. I think there were some bugs. Yo. There's a lot of bugs. Okay. Okay. That's something I'm gonna have to fix at some point. There's no reason that these need to be static bodies at all, so this isn't really affecting my code at all. To just haphazardly change them. So that's a problem. If I come in, I'm highlighting this. I highlight this without ever leaving the gate icon, and then I switch back to the gate icon. And now it makes a fence. That's really frustrating. Hey, what's up, Kuma? How's it going? It's been a little bit since I've done a stream. No, it hasn't. I streamed uh, last week, I think. Anyway, I'm thinking about doing a lot of develop 
uh, game dev streams this month. That's gonna be the theme of November's uh, game development. How can we fix that? Noise, I'm a stream here soon myself. Whenever my ass decides what I'm gonna do. Well, what are you in the mood for? Switching to a new build option without exiting the prior and then returning back to the prior will not correctly update which build option has been selected. Right. Oh, check out my haircut, dude. I buzzed it. Look at this, huh? What do you think? I cleaned it up. Probably do some Risk of Rain 2, some Payday 2. You've been playing a lot of Risk of Rain lately. It's a fun game, I like that. I need to figure out a way I can use the snail to prop up this. There we go. So now what we want to do is we want to check out a new branch for this issue. Um, new branch, a one underscore build option. Create branch. All right. So now whatever changes to the code base we make are, is only going to affect this branch. Um, and that way, in case I fuck something up super bad, I can just revert to the main branch and everything's cool. But then once I'm done, if this code is good, I can push it over to the main branch and merge it with, uh, merge it over the previous code. Payday 2 in VR is intense. I've never played that game. I have no idea what Payday 2 is. What's that game about? What's that game about? Missed call. From my mom again. Modern classic heist game. I need to fix this. Is that you in my corner? 
How do you turn off snapping? There we go. There we go. God, that was bugging me. That was so annoying. I just moved the webcam window over so it's not coming through the frame. I just started playing, but I know this game has a following like Valve games. Who's it made by? Overkill. Payday the heist and payday two. They made a Walking Dead game? Come into UI, go into our build option. So when the shape is entered, builder ref dot selected equals self. Here we go. So we can do we can go like this. Var Reeve. Okay. If builder ref dot selected does not equal null, Preve equals builder ref dot selected. So then, if prev does not equal null, builder ref dot selected equals prev. So this should work. This should completely fix this problem. So I highlight the fence, I come back to the gate, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Okay. Um, print prefab selection exited. Okay, what is happening here? get to the bottom of this. I need to figure out what's going on. Okay. Doorway entered. Wall entered. Okay.
Ah, I see. So, when I exit the wall, it sets the build selection. It sets the build selection equal to the walls previous. Why am I trying to do this here? Doing this here is so fucking stupid. Why am I doing this here? I have this. I have the pointer. Why am I not having this be the thing that updates when it enters? That code is way better. On area shape entered. Connect. No, I need to put some code here. I need to attach a script. Scripts, UI. Pointer. Build. Pointer. No. Build. Pointer. GD. Okay. On area shape entered. Connect. If area dot has method get prefab. Print area dot get prefab. Okay, so then I come over to my build options and I'm just going to say funk get prefab. Prefab. So now, oh, I'm going to make an initialize function. I'm also going to do variable uh, build ref equals null func initialize 
ref build ref equals ref. Okay. Build on initialize uh, dollar sign. Well, actually, what I want to do is. What is on ready wait timeout? Oh, that's this timer. Funk, ready, dollar sign, pointer dot initialize self. So I'm passing a reference from this down to this just because that's easier than going from this up to this. And I do that when this gets created. And then in here, I just have to say, build ref dot selected equals I can comment this out. And I can comment this out and comment this out. That's not gonna matter. Yo, yo. Oh, because I don't enter it again. Okay, so I'm back to the same problem. Um... A very... I mean, I can just increase offset theta, and then they'll be placed around the ring in a more spaced out way. So that way, I mean, I can just go like 60. That's a neat little keyboard shortcut. Yo, yo, yo. So they're more spaced out, so I never am in a situation where I'm touching two at the same time. This is pretty reasonable for the time being because I don't know what else I'm going to put in here for building. But it's probably going to get to the point where I'm going to be able to touch more than one at the same time. I think having this code here is fine for modulating it based on the selector touching it so you get the green highlight and you can know what you're looking at. I just always hate 
doing solutions like this where I'm just like kind of ignoring a problem by eliminating the existence of the conditions which lead to the problem, not the problem itself. And I feel like I owe it to myself to try and solve this in earnest. So what if instead of updating What if instead of updating the selected when we enter an exit var selection we add um Selection dot append area. So we add this to an array. And then we call our function update selection, which is going to say build ref dot selection equals selection at zero. So whatever's in there first, right? And I need to get to this. Very shape exited. Connect. If array, no, if area dot has method get prefab if selection dot has area Selection dot erase area. And in both of these case, cases, we want to call our update selection function. There we go. Look how clean that looks. <laughs> that immediately crash the game okay uh invalid set index selection on base class control dot build gd with type of value area 2d build option What? Oh, selected. Duh. I'm stupid. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Invalid get in zero. <sighs> if no selection dot size greater than zero. Because you can't get the zeroth index on an array that doesn't have any elements in it. That's what that error was. Cool. This is working. I just commented it out. This line of code.
I love deleting code. It's my favorite thing to do. So I just figured out this. I've never even noticed this little function window, but my god, that's going to save me some time now in the future, now that I know about that. Alright. Let's go back to this and change this back. And there we go. Problem solved. Um, do I want to merge this over to master? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, that went pretty smoothly. Glad there weren't any merge conflicts. But it was a pretty simple situation. So I didn't expect that there would be any problems. I can close the issue now on GitHub. Cool. Um, building should require resources. Do I want to work on that right now?
Well, yeah, let's work on that right now. Oh, Frulu has followed. Thanks for the follow, Frulu. I missed that 33 minutes ago. Jeez, I'm a bad streamer. How do you see chat? Uh, I've got a window over to the side. Can you see what I'm drawing? I don't have any follow alerts set up. I still need to figure out how to do that. I don't have follow alerts, which is really bad. So, the player has an inventory. We're going to make a get inventory method. I think I've already done this. I think I've already implemented get inventory. Uh, the inventory should have a method like get count item and I can pass in anything that has the item like re method return item name for duct typing the item. And so, in my fence placer, have required flanks I'm pretty sure the placers have a reference to the player. I'm pretty sure the players ha the placers have a reference to the player. All right, so that's pretty straightforward.
Yep, player ref. Cool. So we can just go bar required materials equal and make this an export bar required materials equal five for now. Doesn't matter. Um, spawn prefab if valid. Valid equals true. Okay, so we'll say if valid and check materials. Come up here, bunk check materials. Kuma, how do I set up follow alerts? Because I'm getting pretty sick of missing follower notifications. Can you explain to me really quick how I can do that? I don't know if you have to end stream. It's not very quick. Even to set up just a basic one, like a little pop. What would you first do? First thing I would do is smoke a bowl. Check my volume bars. Is my audio volume really bad right now? Oh my god. Jesus, I've been using the wrong microphone. I've been using my, like, uncompressed, unfiltered, like, built-in microphone capture, not the one that I've actually tuned for my microphone and my setup. Jesus. Make sure the volume is even on for the basic alerts. I thought this was how button bud streams were supposed to be. What do you mean? What the fuck does that mean? Scuffed is our brand, okay? <laughs> That's so weird. I can see I can see the Pepe Laugh emoji on OBS chat for better Twitch TV, but I can't see it on the pop out. Even though I have the plugin. Or did I turn off? I might have turned off the plugin, actually, because I was having problems with. Yeah, it's turned off. Jeez. Alright. No hate unless it's really necessary. <laughs> no hate unless somebody's asking for it. No spam, no penis emotes. Uh, no shilling, but I'm actually fine if people shill. If people come in and 
they're cool and they're also a streamer, I feel like they definitely should promote their stream here. Because I'm all about building community and networking and interconnecting and getting people together. Get Chatterino, it's better, Jesus. It can never just be like you get the program and you have it and you're good. It's always got to be, oh, now you got to get this other thing that does the same thing but better. That old one was bad and you don't want that one anymore. Even though we were all telling you before to get this one, now you got to get the new one. Yeah, I guess it depends on what people mean by shilling. Like, when I get a porn bot posting, uh... OnlyFans uh, links. I'm not okay with that. Yo, this song though. This song. Yeah. Dude, I've been building up a playlist on SoundCloud of fucking tunes. I should have made a new feature branch for this. In fact, I'm going to right now. Even though I'm never gonna watch or contribute to your stream in any way, Hey man, I'm a fellow streamer too. Want to follow for follow? Yeah, okay. That kind of shit, no. Definitely not. I'm definitely not into that. Follow for follow. What's the point? You're All you're doing is you're just increasing a number. On a website, you're just changing a value in a JavaScript that's running on a node server somewhere. You're, you're not accomplishing anything by just arbitrarily inflating in followers. Um, good shilling is like if somebody was actually hanging out and was part of the stream, and they happen to also be a, follow, a streamer. I would want to get connected with them, like Portobello. He's a streamer. We got connected and we did streams together and played games and worked together. If he came in and was like, hey, if he came into chat, I would ask him to post his link so that way other people could follow my friend. Or like you, like I, I would promote your stream on my stream every day of the week. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Even though you're the only person watching my stream right now. <laughs> like, anybody that I would be willing to post a link to their stream on my stream is totally welcome to post links here themselves, is what I'm saying. That's okay, shilling. Like, Altani can come in and he can post a link, because I've hung out with him. Or Thermo. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying.
Yeah, so we have get inventory. And if we come into inventory screen, count item. I don't know, lol, you and Keratin the only people who ain't do that. That's why you're raid priority. Aw. I haven't really hung out with Keratin that much. There was that one time we played Among Us, but that was it. I feel like uh, I owe you a lot because you've helped me become better at streaming in such a short amount of time. I don't feel like my stream would be what it is now if we hadn't started hanging out again. So I definitely feel a debt to you, bud. Even though I'm not making any money yet, I'm act I feel like I'm actually getting kind of close to that point. Some people have been coming through to see me in chat having fun and then leave to try and emulate. Rather than support. Yeah, that's kind of... So people have been biting your style? I don't know how to feel about that. Because on the one hand, you're influencing people, but on the other hand... They're not really participating. I feel like you have to be participating in order to do that. Yeah, that's not cool. Can't let it get to you, though. Okay, so here's the question. The placer is trying to figure out how much... Let's, let's just call them planks. Number of planks required to build. Maybe we should instead change the focus here. Maybe we should focus on building the plank item first and then checking for that instead of trying to check for an item that hasn't been built yet. And this will be good because it'll also force me to remember how to build <laughs> new items. Plank. Seen. It motivates you to crush them. Destroy them all. Bring me the child. <laughs> Have you seen that clip of Alex Jones talking like a demon? Music is good. Hey, we made a plank. Wow, that was hard.
Also, don't feel like you owe me shit, bro. You're a natural. Like, I sat in the chair for like 30 minutes, not chatting, was listening and interested. You did that with no one in chat. That's all you, bro. Aw. Thanks, bud. I'm glad you're getting something out of this. It's important to keep each other motivated. I feel like as long as uh, we can all find motivation to keep working on our projects, they'll inevitably gain a lot of ground. That's what I believe. All right, uh, low poly. Misc. No, damn it, that's not what I wanted to do. Misc. Plank. Copy this, um, moving it into the project directory. You know, it kind of would be maybe cool to do this as a sprite, the plank as a sprite instead of. a 3D object. Because then I could do that cool thing where like the sprite changes when you move the angle. Like it's always, the sprite itself is always facing the camera flat. So you always see it head on, but it would change and the art of the sprite would be from a different angle. I've always really liked it when games do that. But I'm also really lazy and I don't wanna. I need to delete this scene. Duplicate this one, call it blank. So the way this works is you create a mesh new scene Plank, mesh, and just has a mesh instance. Okay, so plank mesh, add child node, mesh instance. And here we drag in the wavefront file. No. Inspector, here we go. And there it is. Uh, for our material, a new shader material, we're going to add our cell shader. Wait a minute. New shader. No, uh, I don't want new shader. Clear. This is where we drag in the shader, okay. Shader parameters. Let's use that. Shade color. All right. Next pass, we add a spatial material. And albedo we set to black. 
flags unshaded, parameters. We're gonna go grow 0 0.02. Uh, one last thing, we want to set coal mode to front. All right. So now we go back into our plank item prefab. Which is gonna be a duplicate of the base item prefab. We encapsulate that within the type of object that we need it to be. We can either make it a rigid body or a static body. Do we want the plank to be a rigid body and respond to physics, or do we want it to just stand there and you pick it up? Yeah, the Doom effect. Um, the Doom first-person shooter was, I think, actually the first game to use that. Because it was the first 3D first-person shooter. It's helped me grow lately was being a chat Andy, just being a regular degenerate Twitch user again. I don't know, I feel like you get out what you put in, so by supporting others that comes back around over time, and not that fake support, but showing up every time like an actual fan. Yeah, for sure. So far in what little experience I have on Twitch, Streamers seem to be really reciprocative of um, support. Like even when I find kind of large streamers like one or two steps above where I'm at from right now. Um, even just a little bit of like watching the streams regularly, being active in chat, hanging out in their discords. Kind of goes a long way. Uh, explain what again? Oh, so this is the D this is the basically the abstract class. This is the item like template. Hold up, I just had to favorite this song because this song is really good. I'm very stoned now, so I'm gonna get distracted super easily. Uh, this is the like prototype. Um, template for items. Every item in the game is going to be like, is going to inherit from this. So everything that is true, that must be true for every item in order for it to be an item is um, defined in this class. When I want to make a specific item, like a basketball, I create a new scene and the de the like basic template item is here within it, but we switch out the mesh that it uses and the item script for a subclass of the item abstract class. And it's technic it's not technically an abstract class because I can instantiate it, but I, I'm never going to. Functionally, it's the same thing as an abstract class. But it can, in fact, be instantiated. And I use that for testing. But we have the plank mesh, and now we have the plank. What I want to do is I need to delete this again because I did this wrong. New scene, plank. 3D scene. Change type to area. And now, change this to blank, save it. We drag in an instance of item under the plank.
So we would disable... We disable the original item mesh and collision shape for it. And we drag in... Plank mesh into this. And we... Add a child node. Collision shape. Box shape. So let's just see what happens now when I add a couple planks into the mix. Did I already listen to this today? I did, didn't I? I think that's still gonna cause a problem. That's our plank. I didn't... I still need to... Go like this. No, like this. Item name. Plank. Thank you. 
I mean, fuck it. It'll it'll work. It gets the point across. But those aren't really planks. Uh, wood plank. Oh, that's perfect. That's so good. Project Zomboid. You're just rip the sprite from this game. <laughs> no. I thought I had a sprite. This is way too big. Ah, uh, you know what? I should have used Krita to do this, 
because Krita has this really incredible built-in perspective drawing system. So it's just automatically always in perspective. But that might have been a little bit overkill. That's fine. kind of looks like shit. That really does look like shit. That looks terrible. Looks so bad. Looks like salmon. It is salmon. Um, let's try and find a good color. It's a bit too poopy. It's a bit too poopy. I like this. I like these colors.
What do you think? How's that looking? Look good? Hey, thanks, man. So then we just come into our sprite folder. Sprites, come on, where's sprites? I hate that these folders aren't arranged alphabetically. Items, plank icon. Copy the path, we paste it into here. All right, now, let's make sure this works. Plank, there it is. It's kind of cute how small it is. Um, let's open up item. Let's do icon scale. Export var icon. Do I want to scale it? No, I should just scale it over in Photoshop. So I should just come in here and do image size uh, nearest neighbor so that way we don't get any aliasing around pixels. And let's make him 128 by 128. Perfect. Um, I'm going to hue shift him a little bit. I almost want to put like a streak of blue in this, but I think it's fine for now. Yeah, that's probably good. Big. <laughs> Damn. All right. Uh, reduce image size to All 
Okay, how's this? Perfect. Look at it! He's in there. It looks like shit. That's okay. That looks terrible. Okay, look at this. Hold up. These are gonna be like ultra rare resources. What are we calling this? What are we calling this, uh, advanced wood? Deep wood? Might be clever. Synth board. Marshmallow. Do you know where we're going? Huh? I mean, sometimes when you go to sleep, you go on a little walk. And sometimes you talk about a place. All right, this is stupid. I'm getting way off track. I'm getting way off track here. I don't remember. I have really gotten distracted. So we can go there. So you can remember. I Oh, 
Prefabs, items, copy path. Var mat equals resource ref dot instance. Var count equals inf dot count mat print count Placer item name. Okay. Index item name on base class area. Ah, right, okay. Right, because I didn't make a plank. I didn't have to make a plank script. So I guess I can just do... instance.getNode should work. Blair has zero plank.
What? Okay. Um print if inf dot contains no inf dot contains mat. Player has Matt dot item name. Yo. So if I don't have an in, wait a minute. Now I'm really confused. Oh shit, I'm so confused. Because what's happening is I'm calling get inventory, return interaction controller dot inventory, which I have at the start of the game. Here in the interaction controller script, we have an inventory, which is just an array of items. It's just an array of items. It's not an actual inventory class, but in my inventory screen, I have all the functions necessarily necessary for an inventory class. And I'm accessing these functions. My question no longer is why was I getting the wrong number of items in the inventory? My question now is how in the fuck was I getting access to this class after I closed the inventory? Because apparently none of this stuff exists until I check my inventory for the first time and then this stuff gets initialized. But then I... I call terminate when I close out my inventory and all this goes away. And so I don't know. Here, watch. What this is what I'm talking about. So this song is really good, but I need I need some focus here for a second. So if I pick up a plank. I have a plank in my inventory. I try and create an item. Invalid call non-existent function contains in base array. Okay. Never mind. What I thought was happening is not actually happening. It just so happens that array you know, the base array class has a count method. But in my inventory screen, I also created count, and I thought that's what was getting called. Not the case, it's just calling count on the array. And of course it would return zero. 
Because it doesn't have any... Plank... Items, because that doesn't exist. It has... An array of... Plank scenes. Uh, I'll be right back. I gotta go to the bathroom and get some water. So let me turn the tunes back on. Thank you. 
God damn, I'm an idiot. My god, I can't believe that. How long was I muted for? Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Absolute fucking amateur hour over here. Okay, let's try that. Yo, I gotta bounce. I was gonna start my stream 90 minutes ago. Oof. All right, later, dude. Thanks for hanging out. Man. Are you serious? I guess I can put all that into utils. Yeah, I guess that's the only way to do it. Where did utils go? There it is. Um, static function. 